On today's video, we're going to learn how to use a multimeter specifically for troubleshooting our trailer lights. Hey there outdoor YouTubers, it's Dave Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors. And you know, like I said earlier, this video is about how to use a multimeter to troubleshoot trailer lights. Okay, this is part three of a multi-part series of videos on how to fix your trailer lights. Okay, now part two in this video series just dealt with learning how the circuit works. Okay, and Part two and part three are really kind of the foundation videos for kind of moving forward, all right? Um, you need to know how the circuit works and you kind of need to know how to use a multimeter and then you can go forward and really fix any uh, trailer light problem that you might have, okay? But, but this part two and this video part three are kind of the foundations to be able to go ahead and do that, okay? Uh, videos further along in this series will deal with troubleshooting specific problems, rewiring a trailer, changing fixtures, um, converting to LEDs, all that sort of stuff. But to give us a good foundation to go forward to those things, we kind of need to know how the circuit works. Okay, that's the part two video. If you haven't seen it, check it out. And then this video, the part three video, how to use a multimeter. Now, if you've never used a multimeter, okay, don't worry, all right? I know uh, multimeters, you know, like this one, have a lot of different settings, different places that you can put leads, that sort of thing. But we don't have to learn everything about the multimeter, okay? We only really need to know two things. We need to know how to measure DC volts, and we need to know how to measure continuity. Now, there's a lot of different styles and types of meters out there. So you're probably going to have to read the user's manual for your specific multimeter to learn how to set it up for DC volts, to learn how to set it up, you know, to measure continuity, that sort of thing. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to go through that stuff. We're going to be using this meter. This is a pretty basic meter, and it's going to be similar to a lot of meters that are out there. Okay, so seeing how we do it with this meter is going to help you get in the ballpark of how to set your own meter up. Okay, and again, don't uh, be intimidated by multimeters. Okay, we're going to break this down. It's just two things. We're going to make it real simple. All right. First, let's go ahead and learn how to measure for DC volts. All right. So we're going to take our meter. All right. This particular meter, we're going to turn the selector switch to the V with some straight lines above it, okay? And most meters are going to say uh, VDC for voltage DC, or they're gonna say just DC, or maybe like this one, a V with a straight line, okay? The V with the squiggly line, that's AC volts, okay? Again, you're really gonna have to refer to the uh, user's manual for your specific meter to know how yours works, but for this one, it's the V, with the straight line. Okay, here we have a 12 volt battery. All right, so if we wanted to measure and see if we've got our 12 volts on this battery, again, we put the meter to DC volts. We'll take our black lead and we'll put it on the negative black terminal of the battery. We will take our red lead, put it on the red positive terminal of the battery, and Lo and behold, we have 12.6 DC volts coming from this battery, all right? And that's how you would measure the voltage coming out of a battery, all right? So, next thing we're going to do, we're going to hook up our little test circuit here, okay? 
we've got a little trailer light set up here. We've got our uh, plug, okay, our four pin flat plug. And for this series of videos, I'm always going to refer to the four pin flats, okay. Those are the ones that are found on the trailers I have. There's a few different styles and types uh, of different trailer light plugs. But these four pin flats, those are the ones that I have. So that's the ones that I'm going to reference throughout this series of videos, okay. But the principles, you know, a lot of the basics are going to apply the same way to different styles and types of plugs. All right. But for anyways, for this video and this series of videos, we're just going to be going with the four pin flats. All right. And I've got these wires hooked up to our little test setup, our little trailer light setup. All right. Now, strangely enough, with trailer light wiring, white is your negative or your ground. Okay. I don't know why they didn't use black, but that's how it is. Okay, so the white wire always goes to ground or negative. Okay, the negative of your car battery is actually hooked to the frame of your car. All right, and that's the path that it uses to return all the circuits back to the negative of this battery. Now, I get into it a lot more in uh, part two of this video series, how the circuit works. Okay, again, if you haven't seen that, you really want to go back and look at that. If you have any questions about how, you know, the circuit works with trailer lights and, and grounding to the frame and, and all that sort of thing, okay? Because it's the same thing on your trailer, okay? The trailer frame is oftentimes used as the ground or the return path back to your car, back to the negative of the battery in your car or truck, okay? So, again, if you have any questions about that, definitely watch part two of this video series, How the Circuit Works. All right. Anyways, to hook up this little uh, test circuit, the white ground goes to the negative of the battery. All right. The brown, okay, the brown is actually our running lights, okay? So if I hook the brown up to the positive, both of our lights come on, all right? So that's good. Our lights are working, okay? This, me hooking this up would be kind of the same thing as turning your running light switch on, all right? But what if these lights didn't light up, okay? You know, what would we do? You know, that's where maybe knowing how to use a multimeter would come in handy, all right? So we could go to our plug, okay? This is just another example of how to use a multimeter uh, for measuring DC volts, all right? And you can see the plug, it's pretty easy to figure out which color wire goes to what part of the plug, right? This white wire is over on this side, so if we want to measure, like, hey, is there, do we have our DC volts coming out of here? We want to take our black lead, and we want to put it on this single exposed pin, okay? That's, uh, that's the ground pin or the negative pin, all right? And then we can kind of see the one next to it is actually the brown, okay? So we'll stick that in there, and lo and behold, we've got our 12 volts there, okay? It's actually 12.5, all right? So that's just another example of measuring DC volts to help you troubleshoot trailer lights. All right. Now, another example would be if we plug this back in. Okay. Now, in this case, we've got these working. But what if they weren't working? And we wanted to see, like, hey, we've got our running lights on. Do we have the voltage at the fixture? Okay. That would be another example of where knowing how to measure for DC volts, you know, would help us to troubleshoot our trailer lights, okay? And and we'll get into that a lot more in depth in, you know, videos further along in this series. But for this one right here, again, we're just trying to get the basics of how to use this meter, okay? So there's a couple examples of measuring DC volts with your multimeter, okay? This particular multimeter, to measure continuity, we're gonna take the selector switch and we're going to put it to the ohms symbol, okay? Uh, continuity is measured in ohms, all right? And you probably don't need to know a whole lot more than that, but a good continuity reading, you know, a good path for electricity to flow through is a very low ohm reading. We want to be uh, zero ohms or nearly zero ohms, and that tells us that a wire, um, a trailer frame, or any other conductor is a good conductor of electricity if it has zero ohms. The higher the resistance, the higher the ohms value, that makes it a bad conductor of electricity. Okay, that's kind of the basics there. But we take a wire like this, right? 
We want to know, does this wire have good continuity through it? Is this wire a good conductor of electricity? So we'll measure the ohms from one end to the other. All right, we've got our meter on ohms. And this, it really doesn't matter, you know, of course, which side goes to what lead, okay? But we'll just touch them on either side of the, the wire, okay? And we have 0.2 ohms, less than one ohm, okay? So that tells us this wire is a good conductor of electricity, okay? All right. And, you know, like I said earlier, another thing that's pretty important to be able to measure continuity with is your trailer frame, all right? And again, that gets back into part two of this video series, how the circuit works. I go into a pretty detailed explanation of how your trailer frame is actually that return path back, that uh, you actually need good continuity throughout your trailer frame, because all the circuits are actually grounded uh, to the trailer frame, okay? And, and again, we're gonna get into that more in depth in videos that are further along in this series, all right? So we measured a wire, we found out that this wire is a good conductor of electricity, it has a very low ohm reading. All right. Another time that we might want to use continuity to help troubleshoot our trailer lights is if we wanted to check from this plug, this is the trailer light plug, we want to check from this plug through the wiring to these fixtures to make sure we have a good, we have a good low resistive circuit a good uh, conductive path for electricity to flow from this plug through the wiring to these fixtures okay so again that would be where taking a continuity measurement would come in okay so we'll take our meter we'll put one lead in the plug that's associated with the white wire okay and the white wire we can just follow it back visually okay the white wire comes back to this wire net and it splits to this one and it splits to this one now this particular fixture, the white wire is connected up through the stud of the fixture, okay? And if you go inside of the fixture itself, this main framework is actually what the white wire is attached to. So we can put our other lead on that main framework inside the fixture, and there we have 0.2 ohms, less than one ohm, okay? That's a good reading, okay? Zero, nearly zero, you know, maybe one or two ohms wouldn't be too, too bad, but zero or nearly zero is a good uh, path for electricity to flow down. Okay, so now we know from this plug, this white wire, through this uh, bunch of wires here, goes to this fixture, and it's actually attached through this stud right now for our little experiment. And that stud is attached to this main frame inside the fixture, and we have good continuity, okay? We have a good path for electricity to flow from our plug through the white wire to this fixture. And you would go ahead and you'd check the other ones the same way, okay? But you'd be measuring the different spots, okay? Uh, every fixture is a little different, and again, we'll get into that a lot more in videos further along in this series. But there's another example of using a continuity check to confirm that your wiring is good and sound. Okay guys, so what did we learn, right? We learned how to measure DC volts and we learned how to measure continuity with our multimeter, okay? And that is going to help us immensely going forward uh, and learning how to troubleshoot and fix our trailer light problems, okay? Again, if you haven't seen uh, part two of this video series, How the Circuit Works, uh, I strongly encourage you to check that out if you have any questions about how these trailer light circuits work, okay? And now we got into the multimeter a little bit. So like I said, this is our foundation for going forward. And again, uh, further videos in this video series, we're going to get into uh, rewiring trailers, troubleshooting specific problems, changing fixtures, converting to LEDs, all that sort of stuff, okay? But anyways, guys, hey, remember to hunt fish, laugh, repeat. This is Dave Knetter for Knetter's Practical Outdoors. Hey, thanks for watching and God bless.